Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in a Band. I've just collaborated with my friend iDubs on a diss track and it's given me the perfect opportunity to make this video. Before I tell you, if you don't want any spoilers, go over to iDubs channel to see the video on there. So, in the song, we diss Rice Gum. If you're not familiar with the guy, it's probably worth watching Ian's Content Cop to see why he's done some pretty dodgy things. In the early days, at least, he used a ghostwriter without acknowledging it for quite some time. Now, it's fine to have writers, but I feel if you listen to a rapper, you'll assume they wrote what they say. It feels pretty disingenuous as a musician to release something and not credit the people who did the work. So this is where that perfect opportunity comes in. Since he's always been pretty secretive about how he works with ghostwriters, I suggest suggested to Ian that we do the exact opposite. So we recorded the entire writing process for the song from start to finish. And this video is going to show you how that song was put together. Hey there. Hi, I'm Ian from IDubs TV. Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in a Band. This is inside the writer's studio. We're going to figure out how to, uh, to hit rice gum hard. Yeah. With a sick rap. I'm not a music guy, you guys know me. Unless you don't know him, in which case he's not a music guy. Have you ever tried to write a rap before, like, growing up? Uh, I've played around in garage band with simple looping things and nice. just been like, uh, uh, yeah. To get and much further than that. Yeah. One of the first questions Ian asked was the same one a lot of people do. Do you start with the beat or the words? I would say it's easier to start with the beat so you don't write lyrics that are too wordy for the beat, but at least having an idea of what tempo you want the song to be gives you a starting point for what kind of flows you can use comfortably. Generally I make my own music, but in this instance because I didn't have a lot of time, we went for an existing instrumental instead. My friend Dan Bull sent us some from some producers he rated, and we settled on this one. And this is the beat. This is the beat. Wow, that's good. So with the beat sorted, we could start the writing process. Now Ian might come off as confident in this intro bit we recorded, but he was kind of nervous coming into this, as you would be if you're writing your first rap song that you know is going to be seen by millions of people. I think the more visible nervousness came from the recording process, which I also recorded, don't worry. Also, we filmed a bunch of stuff just messing around, so I'll throw that in there periodically. All right. So this is my, my first line that I came up with. Okay. Tell me what you think. This is the start of it all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm setting the scene. The rise and fall of the great Brian Paul, entitled egomaniac with a Gucci haul. The, the rise and fall, the Brian Paul, that's a four syllable multi, nice. Yeah, yeah I didn't even intend to do that. <laughs> I was just Paul, fall. The Gucci haul is only one syllable though, so I try and find some things that rhyme with Gucci with or instead of entitled. And oh my god, like that's that. legitimately something I never would have thought of. Even if you change it to the, the rise and fall of the Brian Paul entitled Egomaniac, dude with the Gucci haul, like dude with the Gucci is again right, like, is it more right. of a flow. <laughs> it's a whole new world for me, it's like kind of mind blowing how like I had all of these sort of restrictions in my brain as to what could be written. You can flow all over the place. Yeah. The rhymes don't have to land on the end of it. In fact, Brian Paul, entitled, is this like rhymes with Brian, entitled. You can kind of get away with that as well if you twist what it. What the fuck? <laughs> How does Brian rhyme with entitled? Okay. How does that okay. happen? Brian Paul, an entitled whore. Oh shit. <laughs> kind of rhymes in a yeah. weird way. Kind of rhymes with Brian Paul. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna need to slow down a little bit. <laughs> uh. I'd say write down all the ideas you have about what you want to say about rice gum and then we'll turn each one of them into a line. Well, let's do that to start then. Ian had the idea to do this kind of seven deadly sins theme for the content cop, so we broke down the ideas under those headings. We started with greed. Let's just start with the surrounding yourself with uh, bitches, money, and Gucci stuff. Like, I, I would just write down what it is I didn't like about that. I do not <laughs> like... <laughs> it's like a five-year-old essay. <laughs> I, this would be content. I do not like rice gum because... Man, I love a good swash buckling on a, on a Thursday afternoon. What day is it today? Yeah, it's Thursday. It's my birthday. Thursday. Dave's birthday. Fuck. And we're only, we're only standing around a pirate on your birthday. That's the equivalent of your... That's my big celebration. celebration. <laughs> Thank you. I'd probably start with the attributes. Greedy, big head, money, hungry. Does he actually have a physical big head? I think he does in the context of the rest of his body. People think you're putting on a persona, 
for the camera, but you really ain't, homeboy. <laughs> Went on to Envy. You, th you think that's just his, his, just him? Absolutely. He's very much apparent about how he, you know, holds himself in the public. I think a lot of people would see his vlog and say, oh, he's doing it up for the camera, but he's not. He's not. He's not at all. I think he very much wants people to see him living this life and be envious. And then lust. Lust. There's clips of him talking about 13 year old girls, clips of him talking about he, how he fucked someone's bitch. Uh, there's a lot of like, just sort of like, look at, I'm with this Instagram model, I'm gonna film her ass for about half this vlog. Saying what he values above other things becomes ridiculous when you say it so clearly. Um, sloth could be a fun one to go to. Sloth. Ghostwriter. Um, I feel like that's a thing we can really hit on. The ghostwriter thing seemed like a perfect way to transition into me and make a diss at him at the same time. But I wanted to make sure it was a valid thing to criticize. What evidence For, have you got that he tried to hide it? There was no thanking or oh, attribution so to the person. Uh, eventually when it came out that that's what it was. Then he did. Then I think he had him on his like channel sidebar. And I think he still is lying by omission. He will mention that it wasn't filmed by him in, in the comments. But you can clearly tell that's not what he values about it. He wants to be a musician, and he wants to have that level of credibility. So he had no problem giving credit to the people who did the cinematography yeah, for some of his videos. Yeah, because he doesn't want to be a filmmaker. He doesn't want to be a filmmaker. It's all about the filmmaking. It's not about how you get the film. What's your name? <laughs> Conrad. Conrad what? Conrad Murray. Conrad Murray, filmmaker extraordinaire. In what, in that case, that's the place you hit him. If he wants to be a musician, you just say he's not good, which is so true. In fact, if you're doing it first try on the beat, you'd be, that would be like the biggest diss in the yeah. world. The fact that you're capable of doing this just by asking a friend. He's got a diss rapper writing it for him and he doesn't right. think to ask him, is this in time? Which is why children watch him. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can get behind this. Your bars are <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to imagine you saying uh, bars in so real life. I don't need a GoPro. I don't need a GoPro chest, right? <laughs> I'm just fine. I don't care how I look. And after that, then decided to flesh out some of those ideas. There were other ideas like this one that didn't make the cut, even though it was straight fire. He's made it stable to use uh, women as props. Because he can't get props from his peers. Because <laughs> he's not getting props from... <laughs> Me, <laughs> I think his stuff is bad. There you go. Really, really bad. I don't want to get too involved with a like, you're a fucking virgin sort of comment. <laughs> there is that element to it, right? Where it's like, he's never shown, hey, I'm in a relationship or you could like- You say something like, you have maximum one year's experience. I don't think you have any right to be talking like this. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's good. What's your film about, Conrad? Politics in Brighton. The politics in Brighton? Yeah. Don't you think that's a bit niche, Conrad? Yeah, it might be a little bit niche, but you know what's also niche? What? My physique. I feel like there's room for me to also, like, self-deprecate in that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> I could speak to you man-to-man -man on this one yeah, kind yeah. of thing. We only got attention, a, attention because, of, because of YouTube. We're not lookers, we're not this, we're not doing Right, that. exactly. Now, one of the things I was kind of worried about coming into this project was I know I give off a kind of distinct impression. I was very aware that Ian's audience could react negatively to me being in this song. So I had to make it really good. <laughs> All right, Ian just said something really strange. That he, he gets my look now. I finally get your look. I understand what? it now. Why do you get my look? Even if you're not, you know, uh, well known on YouTube, you still get looks from people like, oh, who's this guy? Where, where, where did he come from? <laughs> you know, what planet is this? Gay boy from, <laughs> and it's it's kind of good, kind of cool. It feels cool to feel unique, you know. I'm thinking of dyeing my hair now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or the, maybe the the silicone forehead injections. Yeah, I'm thinking I it's something along those lines. <laughs> I could see you doing that for a joke. For a video. <laughs> when I'm writing things, the start and the end tend to be the most challenging parts because you really want them to stand out. How does he tend to start his stuff? I was broke. You were never broke. He has parents who are reasonably well off, right? Yeah. They're fine. It would be kind of funny to parody that. Because I wanted to be very focused on him the whole time, but like, it could be funny if you started off with 
<laughs> I was gay, but now I'm straight, but now I'm back to being gay now. <laughs> I was gay as a kid, then went straight, now I'm gay again. Yeah. <laughs> gay, <laughs> gay. <laughs> now that I'm straight, I want to be gay. <laughs> I guess that I'm gay. <laughs> I wanna be gay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, can you imagine? <laughs> the first thing people hear. Is that set has some serious punch. And it's the exact opposite of, of all of do. his openings. <laughs> that would be really good. Sure, there's not too many instances where you say I wanna I want be, to be gay. gay. I guess one instance would be if like Brian Reynolds was attracted to you. And you didn't have any prospects. If you were gay, this would be the perfect life. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wanna be gay. <laughs> or just someone you really respect. Yeah. Elon Musk, he's gay. Someone, yeah, someone that you could imagine that if you were gay, you would be happy with. Yeah. Perhaps the biggest challenge overall was where to draw the line with how offensive to be. I feel like Kanye West, but without the talent. I feel like Jackie Chan, the little faggot. I feel like Soldier Boy, but yeah, actually, you're exactly like Soldier Boy. <laughs> I feel like that rank ranks up perfectly too. Yeah. Its first line is like, Oh, that's reasonable, and I could see it continuing yeah. in this direction. And then it's like, like whoa! Like, I'm not certain about uh, some of it. Right. Like, uh, like the Jackie Chan, but a little faggot. I'm imagining, if I said that on my channel, I think people would be like, Are you okay? <laughs> I feel like anyone who has a properly functioning brain, hearing you say that is like, he doesn't mean what he's, he's saying. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you actually have have to have a significant disconnect with the reality to, to, to believe that. I, mean, I, I genuinely think he is akin to Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. I have disdain for gays and he is a small one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know why I find it funny. <laughs> it's just so dumb. It's probably also a little bit influenced from things you've heard like, uh, the line reminds me something that Louis C.K. would say, like, meh, a little faggot. Yeah. It's similar to what you'd appreciate from people who you do appreciate because they say things for the sake of comedy and not for, because they believe it. Yeah. There's a lot of respect associated with that. Like, think how bad it would be if you were actually calling someone a fucking faggot. Yeah, like in the... Fucking if, if, if you were like a white... A supremacist type yeah, person. Yeah, like you, anyone would feel bad. They'd be like, this is actually wrong. You can tell the difference. It's Jackie Chan, but a little faggot. I mean, come on. <laughs> that, that, there's such a difference. <laughs> now, once we got some lyrics down that we wanted to include, we started recording pretty quickly because we weren't yet sure how Ian would sound on a song. I had a feeling he'd be good at it, but he wasn't so confident. Uh, but he did it. First thing I'd say is don't worry. We, we will redo this until we uh, get it right. right. I got you. <laughs> I, I can see you feeling a bit. Yeah. yeah. Sheepish. Sheepish is the perfect word. Yeah. It's funny. I'm 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 more anxious and nervous about this than I am about like dropping the video. That's fascinating. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I guess. Giving it your all in front of someone else, like, yeah, yeah. because this will be, like, you know, the, it's this won't. The first few will will not. Yeah, don't worry. It, it's I don't yeah. know. It's like warm up. Okay. You know, before you do the marathon, you've got to do your stretches. Yeah, so that's all we're doing right now. All right, I all very right. much doubt right. any of these will be <laughs> used. You're you're good at consoling me. <laughs> so it was a case of finding out what Ian's voice could do. I want to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> quite right. Oh, <laughs> to us get really <laughs> excited. <laughs> I want to be gay. I want to be gay because you're fucked and I want to smile on my face. That's the line that I would have struggled with the most. That I want to be gay. I feel you just nailed. <laughs> That's so unexpected. I want to be gay because you're fucked and I want to smile on my face. That was great. Uh, we'll try some more silly ones. Okay. I want to be gay because you're fucked and I want to smile on my face. I don't want to be gay! It's like a desperation. I want to be gay, because you're fucked and I want to smile on my face. I kind of like that. Very excited and jovial. Yeah. I'm already a little bit gay! <laughs> uh, I don't know if aggressive suits it. I think it's going to be more... Right. Try crazed. Okay. Just experiment. Right, Some right. of them will likely be embarrassingly uh, bad. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I want to be gay, because you're fucked and I want to smile on my face. <laughs> I want to be gay, because you're fucked and I want to smile on my face. <laughs> so Ian's 
Hey, how are you feeling about the idea that people might think it's really cringy for you to rap? What do I think about it? You know what? I don't give a shit what people think, quite frankly. Is that honest? That's honest, yeah. That's really cool. If I like it, then that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Little ho, little bitch, suck my tiny fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> little ho, little bitch, suck my 5.3 inch dick. Oh, that was so good. Bitch. Little grit. Bitch. I don't think my voice can do a fucking, like... A little bit of a growl. No. Bitch! <laughs> Bad album, bitch! Bitch! The way you did it, well, yeah. there was some in it there. I'm just, like, channeling Max there. Because <laughs> that's exactly how he'd say. I don't know, Ryan! <laughs> I've heard a lot of rappers get in the booth and there's this kind of magical moment where they spit everything perfectly, but... For me, it's not like that at all. It takes me a lot of takes to be happy with something. Like, I remember for my song, I'm Not Dead, I recorded that first line, I'm Not Dead, gotta be a hundred times trying to get the right inflection because I didn't quite know what I was looking for. In fact, some of the lines in this song weren't working with natural inflections, so we had to try some other ideas. Oh, you know what could be good? What's that? There might be an opportunity to throw in the, like, fucked European accent hey, thing. How would that say it? I have no idea. Let's find out. Hey, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> hey, like... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Hey, let's make fun of the... A <laughs> hey, let's make fun of the Ashenbau with his Ashenbau... Bau... <laughs> Hey, let's make fun of the Ashen boy with his a- mm. It's gotta be bow. <laughs> it's gotta be bow. I think I like oriental. Oriental eyes. No, just in general. It's difficult to get a flow with this. <laughs> it's difficult to get a flow with this. I guess part of the problem is it's so, like, out of nowhere as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I wrote this one line rhyming house tour with ground floor, but it didn't quite come across in Ian's accent. Ground floor! Ground floor! <laughs> yeah, perfect. Floor! Yeah. yeah. Ground floor! To call you surface level would be an insult to the ground floor! <laughs> you golly jeepers, you're as predictable as a housing tour. Jesus Christ, you're as predictable as a house tour! That's the voice. To call you surface level would be an insult to the ground floor! You got it. Yeah. I think that was it. Cool. It's also really nice to have a house for this reason. We'd be as loud as we yeah, want. The neighbors are so that. far apart. After we sat on the recording for a while and listened to it a bunch, it didn't quite have some of the bite that we wanted, so we cut out some of the lines and replaced them with things that had a bit more punch. Ian had to record some of those lines in an Airbnb. Uh, Ian, what, what, what was the problem? Ah, uh, there was a bit of popping. Normally you'd use a pop filter, but when you're gorilla recording artists like us, you kind of just have to use your filthy sock after uh, three days of traveling in and out of airports <laughs> okay. and hiking. So let's see if this actually works. The other benefit of using this is because it has so much stink, we're hoping that translates in the lyrics. So people are going to be like, ooh, recoiling as they hear it. One of the last lines that you're recording, what is it? Uh, uh. Talk like you're eating some paste. Hey, say to your audience face, hey, how does how, how does Jake Jason Jacobs <laughs> Jason Statham taste? <laughs> say to your audience <laughs> face, hey, how, how Jacobs are Tories taste? Hey, nice. How do you feel about that? I like it. Puts a little something in your mouth, <laughs> something in the back of your throat. You're not quite comfortable with. So I finalized the mix, and we had the full song. Ian will tell you that he didn't have much to do with making the song, but it's totally not true. He came up with tons of the ideas. And I think that's something that a lot of people undervalue when it comes to rap. Like, no matter how clever the wordplay is or how cool you sound, if the topics you're discussing aren't interesting or funny, then it's not going to have the same punch as a song that is. I've watched basically everything Ian's put out in the past few years, and it's been really interesting to see behind the scenes. One of the biggest misconceptions I had was that he'll say anything, but it could couldn't be farther from the truth. He really does have strong principles, and it's not the whole kind of I don't give a fuck attitude that I think a lot of people assume. Kind of like the attitude that Eminem showed in the early days. But yeah, it was really cool seeing how much he cared about a lot of things. I won't compliment him any more than that, or he won't let me keep it in the video, but I just thought that was interesting. So that's how the song was made. I made another video with Ian while we were hanging out, if you enjoyed this one. Cheers for watching, and here's some random out of context footage. Hey, little 
fella. Now, alien attacks might actually be something. So you read the book there, right? You Oh, I just realized why yours is good. Um, if it's the right celebrity. Like who? Taylor Swift. My name is Mustafa El Sikari, and I want to buy the thing for $826.95. Try being him. Try being oh. rice gum. Uh, I have been a prostitute for the past three years. Man, you do a thrust to encourage myself. Hey, Seagull. Not a fan? I hate birds. <laughs>